Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel for another Trinity Stamps video. Today I'm going to be creating a watercolor feature card, which basically just means that my feature image on the card will be watercolored, but I am going to be using the same stamp to stamp a background for my card as well. I'm going to be using the Hello Sweet Friends stamp and coordinating die set from Trinity Stamps, and I'll be using a Misty to do my stamping. I wanted to show you guys that I have put this piece of washi tape here at the bottom of my Misty panel, and I've seen Christina Werner do this. It's just really nice to have something to grab onto rather than having to grab the door itself, and it just gives a little bit more room to, I don't know, kind of just close the door and open it rather than having to have your hand in the way. So I just wanted to let you guys know that's why I have that piece of washi there. So I'm going to start by stamping the background to my card, and this cardstock is a 110 pound cardstock panel. It is cut to four by five and a quarter, which is just slightly smaller than an A2 sized card. And I'm using Twilight Ink by Katherine Pooler, which is a really soft, light gray color. Now you'll see I'm changing the orientation of my cardstock, and this is so when I place the stamp down, I can hang it off of the edge a bit. I want this to look very organic and like a piece of a much larger pattern, like I cut it out of a sort of like a pattern paper or something. So I wanna make sure that I hang the stamp off a bit each time I stamp it, just so it looks cohesive and like I said, like a piece of a bigger patterned paper. I'm using this ink because it's really light but it doesn't, so it doesn't take away from the main image, it just adds to it, and I really love that idea. I'm now going to go ahead and stamp my main image, and I'm using a piece of Distress watercolor cardstock. It's very rough on one side and smooth on the other, so I'm going to be using the smooth side because I'm going to be putting this on just a regular piece of cardstock, and I don't want the um, texture to be too different and sort of take away and be very eye-catching. So I'm going to go ahead and place that on my Misty and I'm going to use Versafine Onyx Black ink because I will be watercoloring. This ink is watercolor safe or water resistant, meaning that the water won't that you use to watercolor won't make the ink run. I go ahead and stamp that twice and I'm going to be sure to leave that stamp there on the Misty because we're going to re-stamp it after. So make sure that you don't move it and don't cut the cardstock at all because you want it to be in the same exact spot. To set up for my watercoloring, I'm going to be adhering the watercolor cardstock that I stamped my image onto, onto a board. And to do this, I'm using some low tack painter's tape. And the reason that I'm adhering it to the board is so that I get less warping with my watercolor paper. And also if I need to pick up the board to do some watercolor swooshing, um, I'm able to do that easily as well. To do the actual watercoloring, I'm going to be using Altenew's watercolor brush markers. These markers are so vibrant, the watercolor in it, and I often have to dilute them if I'm looking for a softer color because they are so bright. I really love them. You will not be disappointed. So I'm just going to go ahead and squeeze some of the color out on the white section of my glass mat. And this is so I can get a clear idea of what the colors all look like. Before I start watercoloring, I am going to go ahead and saturate the entire floral section of my image with clean water. And I'm using just a water pen or a water brush marker to do this. This is clean water, no color in that there at all. And I'm doing this because I really want the water to play or the watercolor to play in the spaces that I put the water. As it turns out, I really didn't apply enough water, but I like the wet on wet look better than putting watercolor onto a dry piece of cardstock anyway. It gives it a little bit of a softer look. And you can see I'm not doing too much or really any shading here. I'm just using different colors in different spots. This is a really simple watercoloring. The flowers here are very small, so I don't think that it's super important to put a lot of depth into it. But if you wanted to, you absolutely could. I'm just doing very simple watercoloring here. 
You can see that I will go back in from time to time and put clean water down on the space that I am about to watercolor. And again, this is because I want that wet on wet look. Like I said, it just gives it a little bit more of like a feathery texture, I think, and it's a lot softer. And I just happen to prefer that. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the actual water or the, the cup or the watering can. And I wanted this to look really vintagey and kind of like old. I'm using the silver stone color from the Altenew uh, watercolor brush markers, but then I'm going to be using a darker gray color from my Zig markers to sort of make some shadows. And then I'm going to go in again with my water pen and just do some clean water on it so that it looks very weathered and sort of like old. And I really liked that look. I thought that the bright vibrancy of the flowers would look really cool in like an old sort of aluminum looking or tin looking cup. I'm going to go ahead and dry that with my heat tool and to remove the paper and just to make sure I don't get any tearing, even though I will be die cutting this out, I'm going to pull the tape back onto itself and you get uh, no tearing that way. Now I can place my cardstock with the colored image right back into my Misty and you can see the stamp is going to stamp exactly where I did it before. So I'm going to re-ink this up in the VersaFine Onyx Black and when I shut the door it will be in the same exact place. You can see that I did uh, just make sure there before I went ahead and ruined my image if it wasn't in the same exact spot. But you can see that when I do that I get these really bold lines and it almost looks like it came that way, like the it came colored when you get the bold lines over it, and I love that look. So now I'm going to go ahead and use the coordinating dies to die cut this out, and I don't know what happened here, uh, but I lined it up really terribly, and I don't I don't really know where I was looking, but I do go ahead and put a piece of painter's tape down so that it doesn't move around in the die cutting machine, um, but. I don't know, something happened. You can see right there that it's way off. And here I am just like pausing for a second because I'm like, what happened? <laughs> what did I do? So anyway, um, I'm just gonna remedy this as best as I can. I go ahead and put the dye right back over and try to cut out some of those white spots. And this is how it ends up. So this is what I go with. I cut a strip of pattern paper and this is from My Favorite Things. And I cut it, this is about a quarter or a half an inch by four and a quarter inches long. So it will hang off of the ends a bit, but I want that because I want to be able to trim it off at the end as close as possible. I'm going to use that as a base to put my feature image on, and I'm going to use some foam tape squares that I have to adhere the image right on top of that uh, pattern paper strip. I really love the way that this turned out and to add my sentiment here, you'll see in just a minute, I added one of my favorite huge word dies. This is the Big Thanks word die from Altenew and I just cut off the S so that I could stamp U under it and it comes off the card a little bit as well as the flowers do, but I really love the way that this all looks together. It's really bold. It's not a typical card that I would make. If you follow me at all, you'll know that this is a little different, but I really loved the way that it turned out. I also used these bright yellow and orange confetti sequins that are from Trinity Stamps um, just to give it a little bit more of a brighter look. And I really love the way that it all just sort of was cohesive together and looked on the card front. As always, links to the Trinity Stamps shop as well as my blog, Instagram, and all of that good stuff is in the description. And all of the products used today are also linked there. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you very soon. Thank you. Bye.